Thank you all so much for joining us today. We're really excited to have you here for part five of our Demystifying Systemic SEL webinar series. We've been digging into the 10 key elements that help integrate SEL throughout our education systems. And hopefully many of you joined us for our past four webinars. Our first one was on explicit SEL instruction. Our second one on integration into academics. Our third one was about youth voice, and last month's was about creating a supportive learning climate. If you have not seen parts one through four, you can view these recordings on our website. And today we're going to be digging into adult SEL. So what does adult SEL mean to you? Go ahead and drop your answers in the chat. Interesting. I see a lot of self-care, a lot of um, sort of relationship building, regulation, respect, making sure our voices are heard. Love that one. Um, great. So this is really interesting and our panelists are gonna be talking a lot about some of the things that you're bringing up in here and also some of the misconceptions about the what we mean by um, adult SEL. Great to see everyone's answer in here. Um, and let's actually, before we get into talking about uh, adult SEL with our panelists, um, I wanted to just share a little bit of information that kind of as background. Over the last 10 years, CASEL has been partnering with school districts to better understand and support a systemic implementation of SEL. And when we recently asked district leaders who have been working for the last 10 years on SEL, if you could start your work all over again, what would you do differently if you were starting today? And again and again, the number one response we heard from educators was that they would have prioritized the adult SEL sooner. This has been one of the key lessons that we've learned about implementing SEL from these districts and from the growing body of research. You can't overlook the adults. They are the ones who implement, model, and teach SEL to students. And when they experience and deepen their own SEL themselves, adults become stronger and more effective leaders, better instructors, better modelers, and advocates of SEL. So we're going to start with a quick video on what SEL looks like, and then we'll start talking more about it. Social emotional learning supports both children and adults. An effective approach to school-wide SEL provides regular opportunities for staff to cultivate their own social, emotional, and cultural competence and to develop a sense of community. When we think about adult SEL, we're talking about the adult's own social and emotional and cultural competence. Do they have opportunities to reflect on their own self-awareness, their own bias, their own identity, their own thoughts and feelings and understanding of who they are and how they fit in? And we're also thinking about opportunities that they have to reflect and build skills for stress management, for relationship skills. At the Facing History New Tech High School, all educators attend training on social-emotional learning. As adults, we went through training, so you will hear teachers say, I have to have a restorative conversation with Miss So-and-so because we had words, you know, or we're not getting along or something like that. So it's modeling it with each other. So when you're doing it with the, with the students, it's more natural, it's more organic. Uh, the other piece too is kids see when adults aren't getting along. Some of the research has really shown us that when teachers have positive social and emotional competencies, they're more likely to be able to manage their stressors in the classroom context. They're able to 
provide more student choice and voice and opportunity within the classroom context. They are better classroom managers. They are actually able to manage their own stress broadly, right? So they're less likely to burn out, which has huge implications for teacher well-being, for teacher shortages and reductions and the like. So it, teacher SEL not only affects their students, but also has a broader context. So let's talk a little bit about how CASEL frames adult SEL. Um, so CASEL's resources, which we will drop in the chat, really think about adult SEL in these three ways with learn, collaborate, and model. We're going to start just by briefly talking about what we mean by learn. When we say learn, this is about learning about SEL, sort of developing your SEL expertise, but also learning about yourself. It's really important that we provide opportunities that support staff in reflecting on their personal, social, and emotional competencies and develop the capacities for supporting SEL in their peers and students. This is, uh, includes cultural competence. It also includes practicing wellness strategies, which many of you indicated in the chat, um, especially since we're seeing such high levels of stress and burnout these days. This is all part of that learn piece. The second piece is collaborate. And this is as important, and it's about cultivating relationships at many different levels and effectively collaborating with others. So here's where we're talking about staff having structures and opportunities that allow them to collaborate and build relational trust with each other, um, which, by the way, can help buffer against the effects of stress. And it's also about the SEL skills that adults need to have meaningful relationships with students and about the way that they are authentically engaging with families. So respecting the expertise of families and working in true collaboration with families so that we can support our students. All of that is part of this collaborate piece. And then thirdly, you heard in the video talking about modeling. This is really about um, modeling SEL competencies, the mindsets and the skills throughout our interactions with students and their families and community partners and each other. We know, as they pointed out in the video, that students are always watching our behavior and our interactions. And so we want to practice that modeling. And we also want to practice explicit modeling, where we're even being instructive in our modeling. So, for example, saying out loud, I am feeling frustrated right now, so I'm going to take a deep breath so I don't lose my temper in this moment. So the modeling is also critically important. You can learn more about CASEL's adult SEL framework of learn, collaborate, and model by visiting our guide to school-wide SEL. Um, we'll drop a link to that in the chat, and that'll lead you to lots of free resources to learn more about these topics and to, and to think about how you can implement these in your school or district. But for now, we're going to move on to our guests. Um, and in the past decade, we have learned a lot more about adult SEL through research, through practice, and by examining the policies that support opportunities to build adult SEL. And today we're going to dig into some of those insights and questions that we want to explore further. I'm honored to invite Dr. Mark Greenberg, who is a co-founder of CASEL, to join me on screen. Um, he is the Emeritus Bennett Chair of Prevention Science at Penn State University. He's the author of over 350 journal articles and book chapters on the development of well-being, learning, and the effects of prevention efforts on children and families. And one of his current interests is how to help nurture awareness and compassion in our society. Um, and in addition to being a founder and board member of CASEL, he's the chairperson of the board of CREATE, which is a nonprofit that is devoted to improving the quality of schooling and the lives of teachers and students. Welcome, Mark. Uh, hi, Melissa. So glad to have you, and I'm going to turn it over to you so that you can um, start with a brief overview of some of what you've learned about adult SEL. Great. So thanks, uh, Melissa. It's great to talk about this critical issue of adult SEL. Uh, you know, while teaching has always been a stressful profession, and too many teachers have left the profession each year, uh, and that's been the case for a couple of decades, the events of the past two years have really dramatically increased the stresses of teachers. And 
Well, I don't want to belabor this. I think this is an important issue to start with because um, taking care of uh, teachers as well as teachers improving their own SEL is, is really critical. And so if I can go to the first slide, this is a recent uh, um, survey by, that was just in Education Week in April, which shows the percentage of K-12 to teachers that are very satisfied with their jobs. And you can see between about 2000 in eight or 2010, when about 60% or so of teachers were very satisfied, we're now at probably the lowest point that, as far as I know in modern times for teacher, teachers feeling very satisfied with only 12%. And that's uh, mirrored by a Gallup poll that just came out last week, also showing that uh, uh, teachers are much more highly stressed than people probably in any other job in America right now. And we know that very recent events, the violence issues, et cetera, have only increased that. So it's so critical. It's always been critical to talk about teacher and adult SEL, but it hasn't been a topic till recently that people really have seen as an important one. And um, so let's talk a little bit about how we th think about this, this issue. And if I can have the next slide, this is a, a model that uh, Tish Jennings and I developed uh, about a decade ago called the Pro-Social Classroom. And if you look at the right side, the green uh, box, we're really interested in the end, of course, in students, social, emotional, and academic outcomes. That's why we're, we're here in education. But we know to have those outcomes, uh, we know that healthy classroom climates are really important. And we know that when climates are uh, in a classroom is healthy, uh, students are more likely to do well. But that really depends on three things, I think. Healthy teacher-student relationships. How do we develop those skills to have those relationships? Effective classroom management, which is not often very easy to have um, a good classroom management, and oftentimes takes teachers a number of years to really reach that point. And then a third is effective SEL implementation, because we know when we have effective SEL implementation, uh, children are learning skills, teachers are practicing skills, just as you discussed in the learn collaborate model idea. But all of that depends on who, it depends on the teacher and it depends on their social and emotional skills, but also on their well being. And I wanna separate those two ideas if I can for a minute, because teachers can have very uh, effective social emotional skills, but go to work in a place where they don't feel they belong, that they're respected, they're valued, that they have great relationships with colleagues who are, who are supportive of them, that they have a principal that's leading the school in a way that, that he or she um, is building the, the, the climate and the culture of the school in a way that supports everyone in the school. So teachers' social emotional skills themselves are important, but we also have to think about the larger issue of um, social and emotional uh, culture, if you will, of the school and how that affects uh, teachers' well-being. Uh, if I could have the next slide. So there's a lot of rationales, I think, to support adult SEL, especially teacher and principal SEL. What do, we, what do schools gain from having a resilient, involved, and flourishing teachers? Isn't it obvious already before I even begin? But we know that uh, it's been proven already through very careful, randomized trial research that uh, teachers show greater well-being when we support their, their SEL. They show better instructional practices. And an example of that is the CARE program that I have been involved with uh, studying for the last uh, over, over a decade. Uh, and there's a link to that that'll be put in the uh, chat. Students show less disruptive behavior and they be have better attention. They're more likely to be engaged in the classroom and learning. And why not? Of course, we know that children are more likely to, to work hard for a teacher that, that they care for and that, that, that they feel sees them and uh, they feel a sense of belonging in the classroom. And that's the, the critical thing here, students who feel included and valued at school. Now, there's hypotheses about other things that uh, we might find from a research standpoint uh, when we support adult SEL. And I think one of the most important ones that no one really discusses district savings uh, regarding teacher turnover costs. It costs about $15,000 or so to a school district every time a teacher uh, leaves and a new one enters, even more than that probably during this last COVID period. There are also district savings from teachers' physical and mental health costs. 
because if we reduce the number of days that teachers are absent for mental health days, we reduce the number of uh, depressive medications that many teachers are taking, we uh, improve their general health, which even uh, some of the teacher uh, um, SEL programs have shown can reduce uh, um, a diastolic and systolic blood pressure and stress response. And more important, we have greater stability because the more we, we, we allow teachers to grow in their profession, and many teachers will say it wasn't until the 10th or 15th year they became a decent teacher, a great teacher. Uh, teachers need to mature in their profession. And when we have teacher instability from turnover, especially in high-risk neighborhoods, it creates instability for the entire community. So I've been writing blogs about teachers and SEL and well-being for the past uh, four or five years, and you can find uh, a link to those in the chat. I think there's a number of things that, that we need to do that you've already mentioned a bit. One is just supporting teachers' social emotional development and well-being on the job, helping teachers develop deeper skills in their own awareness, especially their awareness of their own emotions on the job, their ability to listen deeply and carefully to children as well as their colleagues, understanding how trauma affects not only children, but affects them, uh, being culturally responsive in their teaching, as well as just developing better effective coping skills because they are in such a stressful profession. And uh, I uh, will, they'll be put in the chat a, uh, a short um, um, brochure that was done recently by Rail Pacific on um, issues in teacher well-being from a systemic standpoint. And that's the critical issue here is we can, we can um, do a lot of work to support teachers' social emotional learning itself, but in, in, unless we make systemic reforms at the district and school level to also create this sense of well-being and belonging, uh, we're not gonna get very far. I know Rose is gonna talk about innovations in Atlanta schools, but right now, to be honest, there's very little research-based uh, practice or practice-based research that has shown how district level changes or reforms can increase teacher and principal well being. And while we're talking about principals, uh, teachers, we have to talk about principals uh, because they set the tone in the building and their own um, social emotional learning and their own well being is critical to the climate and culture of the building. And surprisingly, there's very little research on the issue of how principals can be better trained and coached to improve the well-being uh, and retention of their teachers and also to support families that are also interested in adult SEL issues. So that said, we know a fair amount about how good adult SEL interventions can improve the lives of teachers as well as the outcomes for students. But there's a lot we don't know right now. And I'd like to now invite Melissa back on the screen and look forward to uh, joining with Rose Pregene Harris to uh, talk about the practice. Thanks, Mark. Um, and thanks for that overview of the current landscape of research on adult SEL, what we've learned and what we have more to learn about. Um, I am excited to share um, and introduce a friend and colleague, Dr. Rose Pregene Harris, who is the SEL director from Atlanta Public Schools. Uh, Dr. Prajan Harris is a Louisiana native and she began her teaching career as a middle and high school science teacher in New Orleans, uh, also in Dallas and Atlanta before she transitioned to a high school counselor and then assistant principal in DeKalb County Schools. Most recently, she's been the principal of Gainesville Middle School um, before she became the SEL director in Atlanta Public Schools. And she has uh, strongly held beliefs that in order for students to gain access to a challenging curriculum, their SEL needs must also be addressed by those caring adults who are also self-aware and skilled in meeting the needs of all children. Um, so we are excited to welcome Rose. Thank you for joining mm -hmm. us today, Rose. Thank you for having me. So we've heard from Mark about the research. Um, I talked a little bit about this learn, collaborate, model framework, and we're really eager to hear from you about what does this actually look like in a district? How has Atlanta been implementing a priority for adult SEL strategies as part of your approach? I think it first starts with our vision statement as a district, right? Um, 
becoming a caring and trusting community um, that really um, understands that relationships are at the core of what we do. Um, and so um, as a district, um, it is part of our vision statement to make sure that we have, um, that we create those trusting environments um, and that we help with adult mindsets, right? We have to make sure that we put systems in place to help build those positive relationships um, throughout the district. Um, and so it really starts with our board, our board really valuing and believing in the work of social emotional learning, um, that it is essential to building a culture of trust, um, building a culture of collaboration um, and making sure that throughout our system, um, that those strengths of our um, of our adults are being taken care of, you know, and nurtured, so that we have um, strong capacity building um, systems in place for our adult learners, because um, we're all learners in the in this process. Um, so we we really take the systemic approach to um, social and emotional learning. Um, and Atlanta has done a good job of putting structures in place to take care of their employees. Can you shame, share more about what kind, of, um, what kind of supports you have for the adults, what kind of professional learning opportunities you have and how you've been able to manage the time and strategy for doing that? Mm -hmm. um, so I think it begins with our onboarding system where every employee, um, as part of our own on onboarding system, we go through the Gallup's um, strengths finders um, um, info, but we also have SEL 101, where we really talk about that culture of learning and what it means to have those social emotional competencies and skills and being able to model those um, for kids. We know that um, kids can't learn um, without strong relationships, that they don't learn well without strong relationships. And we um, actually start with the onboarding um, and the hiring process even before. So um, part of um, our hiring process um, involves questions that involve what are your thoughts um, around social emotional learning? What skills and competencies do you already bring to the table, right, as part um, of the hiring process? And that goes from um, our administrative hiring process to our teacher hiring process. So SEL is part of that. Um, in addition to that, we have um, SEL liaisons at every school, and we use a train-to-trainer -train model because we have a small department, but it also speaks volumes that we do still have a social-emotional learning department in APS that we can focus in on the work of social-emotional learning. Um, and so um, as part of the train the trainer model, we have SEL liaisons at every school. And those SEL liaisons are really our capacity builders for the adults. Um, we have monthly um, themes and competencies of the month that are really built into our systemic programming um, so that we have an intentional focus around our SEL learning standards and the things, the skills and competencies that we really wanna focus on as a district. Um, in Atlanta public schools. And so those SEL liaisons at every school help to deliver that professional learning um, to our teachers. In Great. addition to that, <laughs> our, our team um, falls within the teaching and learning department. And we know that teaching and learning is the core business of education, um, which means that SEL is also part of the core business of teaching and learning. And so we know that the SEL skills are really those adaptive skills in teaching, right? Those are the skills that teachers need in order to be able to really create the, the equitable learning environments that our students need in order to feel seen, valued, and heard, and, and a sense of belonging in our school communities. Thanks, Rose. And that's such an important point, too, um, that you just made about how SEL is framed in the district as part of the core priorities, the board is on board, it's part of the vision, and that SEL resides in teaching and learning. I know many districts, including Atlanta, when you first began this work, um, think about SEL as something they put in the Department of um, Student Support Services, or this is where the guidance counselors or social workers are because of the resident expertise. 
Um, but sometimes when, when we start that way, it becomes sort of associated with intervention and not seen as critical to teaching and learning and academic instruction or something appropriate for all kids. Uh, so I think that's a great um, example of thinking about it more systemically. Um, and I'd love to ask this question to both you and also Mark Greenberg about when you're thinking about professional learning that you're providing specifically on adult SEL, um, we saw a lot of folks in the chat say, oh, adult SEL is about self-care, but, but what is the professional learning that's included that may have self-care strategies, but, but what other types of strategies? And Mark, why don't we start with you? Would you, would we, could we expect to see in an adult SEL professional learning experience? Well, I think self-care strategies are an important part of this. And actually, um, the area we know most about is the combination of teaching teachers uh, interpersonal mindfulness. I don't mean meditation or sitting on a pillow, but just setting intentions for the day, uh, being uh, aware and present, really, really present in the classroom with, 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 uh, with students and with your colleagues, those kinds of interpersonal mindfulness activities. But they alone are not sufficient, I don't think, although they, they can clearly reduce teacher stress. I think it's really important that, that we really dig in, if you will, to teachers' own self-awareness because we know that this is the, really the key issue. When we become more self-aware, and uh, as um, one person said, that only the naive know themselves, uh, we're always learning. This is not a problem for children. <laughs> it's a problem for humans to become more self-aware and to uh, just realize that, um, that, that life is difficult for all of us, that there's a lot of suffering going on both in our teaching and in our students and in and, and our communities. And understanding that suffering and becoming aware of it, understanding how to be a part of healing that work, of, of understanding how trauma works in the classrooms, how it affects children, how that means we need to, to treat each other, not just how we treat children is so important. And Rose said the most important thing, I think, and that is she used the words uh, seen, valued, and heard. And I think that's really the, the, the key, not just for kids, but for, for adults in the building. And uh, many teachers don't feel seen, valued, and heard either by their, the leaders or by their colleagues. Right. And um, this is a really critical issue because one thing is to be seen, another thing is to be valued, but to really be heard also and to have a sense that you influence uh, how things will go in your building, that, that systemic change is something that you can be a part of, I think is really critical for uh, all adults in the building. Yeah. Uh, Rose, um, <laughs> and what would you say about the actual professional learning when you say we're going to do professional learning around adult SEL? Like what, what might we expect to experience in that kind of a session? So for the when we when we decided that uh, adult SEL was so critical that we really needed to focus in on it, we really started with the first two competencies, self-awareness and self-management, right? Um, those two things, just focusing on those competencies that focus on the self, what, what is it that I am bringing to the table, um, I think is so very important for um, really looking at adults in the district. And so helping the adults to be able to have those reflective conversations, right? And just put it out into the universe. This is who I am. This is what I bring to the table. These are some, some practices I might need to reflect on and remember how those things, how I come into the room really affects what happens to kids. And so am I bringing my best self, right? And we want we want to be able to take care of the adults, the, uh, the administrators, the teachers, the staff members in the building who are taking care of the kids. So if we're not taking care of them and they are not taking care of themselves in a way that they are their most productive selves, then they're really no good for the kids. And so we know that teaching is a critical profession, right? Um, if not, if it was not, um, it, that humanistic side of teaching is what we really need in order to make those connections to the content that we're trying to teach. Um, and so what teachers bring to the table is so very critical to 
what students need um, in their life. They need those caring relationships. And so in order to, for them to have those caring relationships, they have to be whole, they have to be well. Um, and so that's knowing what you bring into the room and how every day, you know, you can create a space where, where kids feel that connection to you. Um, and so we start with the self. We start with what teachers bring, what adults bring into the room. Um, where, and if you walk into any school, you can automatically feel the culture of that school. If you have a screaming teacher, a screaming principal, you're going to have screaming kids, right? <laughs> if you have calm, if you have calm presence, people who know how to model um, those SEL skills that kids also need to be able to self-regulate. You have calm kids. And so we start with the self yeah. um, in terms of the adult SEL piece. Great. And I also want to talk a little bit about this, um, the idea of um, relationships that both of you have brought up quite a bit, that collaborate section of the model. What are the kinds of experiences that you'd recommend to foster relationship building that is, um, gives adults that opportunity to feel valued, seen, heard? Um, Mark, uh, can you share more about kind of that, the collaboration you mentioned in your piece earlier that, you know, um, the relationships, kids kids um, work harder and learn more from teachers who they care about or who they feel cared for by. Um, can you share more about how we can build the capacity of the adults to have relationships and not just capacity, but even opportunity to develop those? Yeah, I, I th think there's lots of things that we can do in there at different levels. Let's take a, a simple one that um, Castle has been uh, very, very critical to, which is three signature practices. Mm -hmm. uh, which I, can be used at all levels from principals using those three signature practices to, to, uh, to hold meetings in which teachers really are involved in dialogue and are really welcomed and, and uh, seen. Uh, I think the same thing often teachers now uh, I know are applying this in their own classrooms. Uh, and um, so that's one very, very simple thing. I think a second thing is having um, time for teachers to work together uh, not just on the other aspects of academic content, but on how they're dealing with work, how they're struggling in the classroom, to have other teachers that you can honestly talk with about what's going on and what's hard is, I think, essential. And this is also true for principals. Uh, we often used to say that teaching was the loneliest profession, but I think principling is even more lonely. Uh, and principals really need these these. Uh, uh, peer networks where they can just let their hair down and share what they're struggling with and what it, what the difficulties are in, in leading a building. But then there are simple things at the, at the level of the building. I'll give you an example. In an SEL program that I worked with, we, uh, we give compliments to children each day. Each day, ch a child gets a compliment from their friends, from the teacher. They take it home and parents are asked to add, add a compliment. But in many of our buildings, that started then uh, at, the, at the adult level where there was an, uh, uh, at, the, at the start in front of the building, there was a bulletin board and each week uh, a staff member, it could be a bus driver, it could be someone from the cafeteria, it could be a teacher, it could be a school secretary. There are pictures put up on the wall and for that week, parents, other staff and children can all write compliments to them. Just a very simple way to build a sense that we're a part of a community and that we care about each other. So there's lots of different ways to do this. There's ways at the level of the leadership, there's a ways that teachers can create their own uh, context with each other. These, these peer group meetings where they can share with each other are critical. But as Rose said, we also have skill development to do. We all can get better at uh, listening. We all can get better at understanding and being aware of our own emotions, especially in the context when you're really having a difficulty with a child or with a colleague. How do you resolve that conflict effectively? How do you, how do you model, as you said, Melissa, um, what, are the, what are the skills, what are the things we need to do when we have deep conflicts with others that can allow us to work through them? Yeah, great, thank you. Um, Rose, are there things that um, in Atlanta, either at a school level or a district level, that structures you put in place to facilitate relationship building at the classroom or across principals or others to, to, to develop that collaborative model? 
Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the three signature practices are one of the major things that we do. Um, even at our board meetings, we start with a warm welcome um, and make sure that those optimistic closes are um, also part of the process. And um, we do the same thing. We model the same practices um, in all of our meetings. So re- regardless of if it's a district level training or a school meeting, um, we have a plethora of resources that we provided to our administrators um, um, in order to be able to provide those same supports to teachers um, in that same culture building type thing in their schools. Um, We also have um, this year um, in particular, we've been doing restorative practices training a lot, but this year we have a systemic approach to it um, in terms of all of our assistant principals. We just finished an institute where all of our assistant principals were trained in restorative practices, and then they will become co-facilitators with us in their schools around what is restorative practices and how that piece of that work can um, actually help to build relationships. So I think the knowing (laughs) what strong relationships are and then knowing how to repair harm when something happens um, in those relationships are gonna be key um, culture builders um, within our school. Um, And so we um, also have a very strong focus um, this year on academic integration, knowing that once we do the community gatherings and do the community building that we have an intentionality around what that looks like throughout the day and practicing and reinforcing those skills that we're building. Um, And it starts again with the adults. So we model the same thing with the adults in adult learning um, that we want the adults to model with their kids. Great. And I think it's great to talk about restorative practices. Sometimes Mm -hmm. there's a misconception that restorative practices are about handling conflict or discipline issues, but really, to your point, it's about building those relationships um, as part of the way in which we interact, and that can really help um, prevent conflict even. Um, So it's great that you are really looking at restorative practices district-wide. Um, I want to shift gears for a minute and talk about um, parents and caregivers. Uh, What are you doing to help engage in relationships with parents and caregivers? And and as you may know, um, this fall, CASEL will be hosting our uh, virtual summit focused on school family community partnerships. And, And the way in which we engage with parents actually has a lot to do with the adult SEL that we bring to the table and our collaboration efforts. So can you share a little bit about how you're thinking about parent engagement in Atlanta? Mm-hmm. So again, we're a very small team, but what we've been doing for the um, past two years is actually um, training parent liaisons to make sure that in their meetings, in their interactions with parents, that they are given the parents the same opportunity to learn the skills that the students are learning um, in their classroom. And so part of that training, part of that capacity building work um, is really having the parent liaisons, um, introducing them to the three signature practices so that they incorporate those in all of their parent meetings. Um, And also the themes and competencies of the month, the SEL themes and competencies of the month. And so when they plan um, their activities for parents, they're aligned with those themes and competencies. And they actually teach the parents um, the same skills that the students are learning. So you might hear, here are some interactions that you may have with your with your student that you may hear your student saying. And then these are some things that you can do to help reinforce those same skills that we're teaching um, within the classroom. And so we are helping to do that through our parent liaisons um, in our parent engagement activities. And so they hear about SEL. <laughs> Um, and Mark, what would you add about engagement with parents? Well, it's, I'll, I'll say the same thing I said for teachers and kids. Parents want to be valued and seen and heard. Right. And uh, one of the problems we have in schools these days is, is uh, it's, let's go back to the systemic issue of job restructuring. The fact that teachers, uh, first of all, get very little training for the most part and how to engage with parents. And secondly, they're given almost no time to do that as if parents are something that, um, you know, you work a long, long day, and then you're supposed to do all this email at night with parents, rather than it's part of the structure of the school. And I think job restructuring in this way 
uh, is very important because if we're serious about really developing parent partnerships, then we need to really know parents and really have them feel that they are they're heard and that we're joining together with them. And there's no better place to join with them than on their children's social emotional development because this is something that every parent is concerned about. Every parent wants to make sure their child has friends, they're getting along in school, they're engaging in learning, and they're getting prepared for, for the world of work or uh, a career. And the last thing I would say is that in terms of the parent component, picking an SEL program that has a strong parent component is important to think about when you're thinking about picking an SEL program in your school, because social emotional learning, as we know systemically, if, if, if uh, that's what this 10 part series is about each month, is really about being systemic. And that means really thinking about uh, parents and their needs, their concerns, what we can support them with, how we can learn from them also as a central component of what we call systemic SEL. Yeah, I just wanna um, emphasize that point, learning from parents. Um, we know that parents are our children's first teachers, especially in social and emotional learning and really listening to parents and hearing their perspectives um, and learning from them about their children can help us all do a better job of supporting kids. So I think that's such an important point. Um, I, I wanna get to some of the questions. We only have uh, about 15 minutes left and I know that there's some, there's some questions that have come in on the Q&A. So let me look through here and see um, what kinds of questions we might want to talk about right now. So what is your experience in using group support techniques to improve teachers' well-being. Um, Mark, why don't I start with you? What's your experience in using group support techniques to improve teachers' well-being? Well, most of the uh, uh, programs that have been studied to support teachers' uh, social emotional learning and well-being are done in groups. Um, and these really require, I think, trained uh, and, and skilled facilitators, people that are have good social emotional skills themselves, but also know how to manage the group context. Um, you know, often when you have a group of teachers, some of them may not be that interested in, in being there for one reason or another. And knowing how to recruit the interest of teachers to make it fun and lively and, and, a, and a deep learning experience at the same time is something that takes skilled facilitators. And that's, I think, one reason why uh, as Rose has in Atlanta, we need to have social emotional learning specialists. Uh, often, almost always, they've been teachers first, and they really work for the district uh, uh, at multiple schools usually to really build all the competencies to support principals in their work, to help teachers understand how to work with, with parents, but also to facilitate work with among the teachers themselves. Right. I, I would add to that, that, um, you know, when we, our monthly liaison meetings are, are like a, a a school community for those support specialists. And so they have time to reflect on their own practices, which really deepens the work that they do in their schools with the other adults. And they have the then they then have the ability to really lead those group sessions in a way um, that um, helps to facilitate building community um, and building trust with the people at their schools. Thanks. Um, I think that there are a lot of um, folks in the audience that are really interested in digging in more on, on kind of, if you're in a school or a district um, that doesn't have, you know, as, as Rose is describing some of this really part of the vision and board, are there ways that either of you have seen that are effective in helping um, the school leadership or district leadership see this as a priority? Like what are the best ways to make adult SEL a priority um, and not be seen as just one more thing? Well, I, I guess my experience, I, I do a lot of work with, with principals and superintendents and I think they have to experience it themselves. That is the more that we can help them you, you got to realize what a difficult job it is to be a principal and especially to be a superintendent these days. And, and the more that, that we can help them explore their own needs 
uh, and how their own ability to listen, to be emotionally aware, to manage their stress, to figure out ways to cope, to, 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 to turn off at times uh, is really important. And as they see how important it is for them, themselves, I think this is the most important factor because you can talk till you're blue in the face about research, the research showing that that uh, that adult SEL will lead this better student engagement. Adult SEL will lead to lower district costs. SEL will lead to X or Y. They've heard all that. They've read all that. They've been to seminars where they've seen all that. And I don't think that's sufficient. So <clears throat> when we think about a district, I think it's really important that we don't think about just engaging with teachers. <clears throat> in fact, we often start with the administrators. And I know that uh, in Castle's uh, district initiative, that's a really key issue, Melissa, you've done over the last decade is really to start with the administration and, and the, their deep understanding as part of the process of them owning this for their schools. And I think part of one of the one of the skills that we teach is advocacy, right? And so if you are a strong advocate that this is something that is really important, start with a small group, find some like-minded people, some early adopters in your school, right? And start a small group. Nobody says that you can't meet. <laughs> um, so if you start with a small group of early adopters, those early adopters really influence the whole school culture, right? People will be will get on board. And even if your administrator is not on board, eventually they will get there because those early adopters are influencing the culture of the school. So I would say be an early adopter, right? Be an innovator in the space that you're in and introduce introduce the concepts of SEL skill building to a small group of people and then watch it grow. It will catch on like fire. Yeah, I've seen that too. And um, I, I think having opportunities for teachers to connect with each other around this, for principals to connect with each other. And I will say too, um, I have been convening the superintendents of the districts we partner with together and the sort of magic that happens when superintendents, you want to talk about a lonely job, um, when they have a chance to talk with each other about the things that they're struggling with, the things they're finding success with, the way that they're thinking about SEL work, it does have this kind of contagious enthusiasm um, catch, you know, sort of catching around like how to, how to do this work. And so really connecting them with each other has been helpful too, um, to really help people see the value of it. There's been a lot of questions in the chat about the three signature practices. So I'm, I'm hopeful someone on our team is dropping the link into that. And just to be clear, the three signature practices, which Castle uh, recommends both for the beginning of a lesson at any grade level, but also our staff meetings, our board meetings, it's really about starting lessons or starting experiences with an opportunity to connect on a personal level having some engaging content with appropriate sort of engagement um, and breaks inside, and then ending with some reflection and optimism. That warm welcome is something people feel like, oh, we don't have time for that. But actually it takes just minutes and it helps to bond people together because they get to know people in ways that are different from maybe business as usual, and you begin to see sort of the, the building of relationships over time. It's not going to happen with just one warm, welcoming activity, but if that becomes a normed practice within board meetings, within staff meetings, grade level meetings, or classroom experiences, people get to know each other better, and that strength of relationship does carry forward. Um, so, and I, I agree with you too, Rose, that sometimes um, once it starts happening in a group of classrooms. Um, other teachers, they start hearing from kids. Why do these kids like to be in these classes all the time? Why are these adults having this great experience? And it does tend to catch on. Um, so let me move on to another question. I, I think we're getting close to running out of time. Um, there is a question in the in the Q and A about um, about mindful awareness practices and how that can support adult SEL work. Um, how do you do that? Um, Mark, I think this question is directed at you. What does it mean to create mindful awareness practices and how do you how do you do that and how do you kind of manage that, especially for those that might not see that as a valuable use of time? Like, what does that look like? Sure. Well, I think, uh, first of all, we can think about the five castle competencies and in each of the castle competencies, mindful awareness, I think, can deepen these abilities. 
Uh, for example, on self-awareness, uh, understanding the nature of your mind, uh, noticing that emotions come and go and that we don't have to react to all of them. We can notice them uh, is a really important practice. Uh, setting intentions at the beginning of the day or the beginning of a class is a way of, of uh, uh, maybe better self-management, for example. Understanding how dialogue can be used to, to resolve conflict is a, another kind of mindfulness skill. And when we talk about social awareness, uh, really we talk often about empathy, but really deepening the sense of what it means to be compassionate and how do we understand what it means to feel compassionate and what do we do when we feel compassionate, even in situations in which maybe there isn't much that we can do. And there's lots of practices to do this with, and there, none of them are necessarily sitting on a pillow. A lot of them are around issues of uh, taking three deep breaths, for example, which often we do in three signature practices. Uh, teachers find this probably the most important thing is just if they can just take a moment. And in an SEL curriculum that I uh, was involved in, there's a, we have a, what's called a red light. And oftentimes this will mean the teacher might just go over to the red light and say, I'm feeling really upset right now. I'm not sure what I should do. I need to take a break. I'm going to take a couple deep breaths so I can really think what can I do? That's a very mind, mindful practice. Uh, and, and learning how to listen and communicate in deeper ways. So I think mindfulness is, uh, can help to deepen the SEL competencies that we already have. And uh, we can do that on the fly. This uh, is things you can do in a shower. I often call it windshield work. When you drive to school and you park in the lot, before you pull the key out of your car, just think, what do I want my day to be like? What are, what, what's my intention today for, for being with my colleagues, for being with uh, my students? How do I want today to be? And just those short conscious awareness moments are really critical and really can support those castle competencies. Yeah, I, I think those are great examples. And I think sometimes people underestimate um, the power of some of those simple strategies for just taking a deep breath. I know as a mother of twins, I use those <laughs> strategies all the time. And, and um, it, it, people have a misconception that we're talking about, you know, eyes closed in a dark room, sitting on a pillow, you know, with chance. That's not really what we're talking about here. And so I appreciate you bringing that up. Um, I think at this point, we actually need to wrap up and go into our key takeaways from this webinar. Um, so we'll put back up on the screen, um, some of the key takeaways. The first one I wanna just remind everyone is that there is a large body of research that demonstrates that teachers with strong social emotional skills have better practices and relationships with students. Um, but there's also more research that we need to do so that we can learn more about those effective approaches to developing adult SELs and the impact on the broader school community. So that's one key takeaway. The next one is that this is about lifelong learning and it's not just about teachers. So we don't want to communicate, oh, as adult SEL, we need teachers to um, you know, improve their SEL. This is actually about all of us, those of us that support teachers, the, the, um, the principal's own SEL, the superintendent's SEL, the board SEL. This, this is really about lifelong learning for all of the adults in our, um, in our systems and in our families. And then the third one is that we really need to be thinking about policy solutions that create the kinds of structures and opportunities and, and just time that we need so that we can um, really attend to adults' own learning in their environment. So this is not something that happens without time and dedication and priority for this. And so there are policy um, strategies that are important here as well. 